Claire, thank you. Former President Donald Trump will be subpoenaed in the investigation into the January 6th Capitol riot. The House committee voted unanimously on the move during its last public hearing before midterms. Attorney and former D.C. Democratic Party Chair A. Scott Bolden joins me now to look into uh, what went down yesterday. Good morning to you. Thanks for joining us. Thank you for having me. So what was to you the most striking revelation or the biggest takeaway from this latest and last hearing? I think the congressional leaders uh, at Fort McNair gave the public a bird's eye view of really how calm they were, but how concerned they were about not only the personal safety, but the safety of others and when they could get back to the government's business. Obviously, the punctuation point was Donald Trump and the subpoena and then voting unanimously to do that. Not sure that's going to happen. There are only about 60 plus days left before the House may change over to the Republicans. But it was symbolic and a punctuation point on how important this investigation is, how, how the results are really important. And then lastly, what this will mean for the history of our democracy. It'll be uh, it'll be restored, but more importantly, it'll be held in the annals of history. I want to talk about the subpoena real quick, because even if, let's say, theoretically, he does appear within the next few weeks, he can also just uh, go to his, uh, just decide not to say anything, his Fifth Amendment right. So really, like a lot of other witnesses have said, so even him sitting down as a witness, there might not be much more revealed, correct? Well, he'll never do that. But if he does do that, what, what's really important is uh, that will be the show of all shows because he may decide that he wants to create a spectacle and defend himself. On the other hand, if he does not show, he can be held in contempt of Congress. He can be referred to DOJ for prosecution for contempt of Congress. But that's a long legal yeah. battle, if you will. One, neither side wants to go through that. But secondly, if the Republicans take over the House, the, the hearings themselves will become moot right. and uh, will cease to continue to operate. But a lot of good information is coming out of, come out of this hearing. Uh, they've referred a number of individuals and in in this information to DOJ. And DOJ currently has a federal investigation going on in regard to the insurrectionists and what happened on January 6th. So we, have, we need to stay tuned in regard to DOJ. We have about a minute left, but I want to get to a couple of points here. One of the things that folks found particularly unsettling were that there were specific threats leading up to this. In fact, one in particular saying, hey, guys, they, the plan is to literally kill people. Please take this tip seriously and yet it appears that was not the case. What does that say? Well, CIA, I'm sorry, the, the Secret Service knew of weapons on the ground. They met with the Proud Boys before in regard to the parameters, and yet the conversations and the recordings seem to be uh, less intense than you would think for the Secret Service, knowing that there were weapons on the ground, that Donald Trump was saying, let the people through, they're not here to hurt me, even though they could hurt others. And so uh, a lot of negligence there. But more importantly, if DOJ finds evidence of a conspiracy involving the Secret Service and Donald Trump and others, that could be very problematic. And even maybe others may be prosecuted for their conspiracy to support the, the uh, insurrectionists. In, in the last 30 seconds here, we know the committee wants to uh, propose reforms to prevent this from happening again. What has happened on that front so far, and what can we expect, if anything at all, in terms of changes? Well, we know there's pending legislation in regard to making it clear that uh, Vice President Pence or any vice president is, is merely a ceremonial role to accept those votes from the states in regard to presidential elections. That's the first thing. Second of all, there may be additional legislation that could be passed that make it very specific and, 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 and more, um, more appropriate in regard to prosecuting those who want to stop the vote as well as the insurrectionists uh, and those who would be charged with it. So be on the lookout for that. But again, DOJ is not yeah. done with this. There's so much information that DOJ has to do something about this or not do something about it. So there's a lot more to be uh, to be learned from this investigation, yeah. especially through DOJ. As you mentioned, yeah, all eyes on the Department of Justice and uh, seeing what they decide, if anything, to do with this. Attorney and former D.C. Sure. Democratic Party Chair A. Scott Bolden joining us this morning, breaking this all down. Appreciate you as always. Thank you, sir. Thank you. All right, Tucker, we'll send it over to you.